So what are the things that, or the signs that a person is uh, financially mature? Sad to say, 70% of our people are sadly poor. And not because they are poor, but I notice like mga tindera or, or market vendors, they earn big money. Yes, they do. They do. But they, they don't know how to manage the money. Yeah. Yeah, our sad, no? Our, many of our public school teachers are in debt. True. I, you know what I call that? What, sir? The OFW effect. OFW effect? Why is okay. it? Okay, OFW effect. What's OFW effect? You have, you're so lucky to go out abroad and work. Yes. How much is your income? 30, 40, 50,000, 60,000, 70,000. There's a culture in us Filipinos that we're so nurturing to our relatives and yeah. family. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No? That Hala, if somebody gets sick, hala, all the way, boom! When they go home, bar barangay, the entire barangay. The entire barangay, so <laughs> there is good and bad. It nurtures relationship. But you would be surprised to, for me to say this. It nurtures family re relation, but it also nurtures laziness. I'm sure every OFW knows this. They go abroad, their family or their friends, ah, no, no. I need this, I need that. A husband or the wife or the what or the kid sent they, because they feel so lucky that they are earning so much, you know, yep, money, money compared to the usual. The usual. Hala, they just give whatever is to earn, you know? So, not realizing the husband or the wife or the what or the relatives supposed to be for scholarship. We uh, used to drink beer, yeah. lazy, will not work anymore because. Yes. I have a relative or my wife or my husband is in Dubai working. Ah, okay na ko. Relax na ko. Sir Ed, um, personal question. With, with where you are now and of course your age, no, um, what still drives you, sir, to move forward, to create things, to create businesses? You know, at, at my age, I'm pushing 60. Uh, strong, <laughs> pushing strong. Yeah. Uh, someone when I was in a, <coughs> a burger counter, the I was so touched that the counter girl that the, there was a long line, and the counter girl, sir, sir, I said, oh, she knows me. I think she's my friend. I don't recognize her, sir. Th this line, senior. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh so I'm still uh, <clears throat> adjusting to the being senior. To being dual citizen. Yeah. So. I've been trying to share this uh, informal advocacy. Every chance I get, uh, every businessman who has, you know, been successful or have influence, I always try to give them this, you know, advice. Whatever their passion, whatever their hobby, whatever their business, you use it as a, a transformational tool. Wow, transformational yeah. tool. Because that's your expertise to at least uplift in your own little, little way the society. Remember, more than 70% of our people are poor. So it's so, it's so sad. And that's, that's what I'm trying to, ad that's at my age, I'm trying to advocate that. Yeah. Example, I have a contractor friend. I brought him with mga informal settlers and and let them talk. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know. And he, he gave them tips how to construct their dwellings from uh, a very ugly, number. very ugly dwelling into a more livable, more you know, it can be a source of pride at even lesser cost. Okay. No, but this these uh, informal settlers or. Uh, poor people, they don't have that knowledge. <laughs> so what the contractors or the civil engineers or the architects can do for their part is to share their knowledge of how to build dwellings that are cheap, economical, and effective. Okay? If you are a contractor or a civil engineer or a an architect. Okay. If you are a you own a hair a, a, a beauty parlor or what? On weekends, once a, once a month, you go to the streets. The streets, 
you go to ano just you know, just contact the public school teachers mm -hmm. public school principals uh, city hall they have ano division of the, for the welfare of the urban poor they will they, they can help you connect with the poor people wow no if or your parish priest what you what the, the role they play you know it's try to transcend uh, as a checkbook donor mm -hmm. it's so easy to just write a check and okay that's good I, that's fine no that's what that's what they usually do now. yeah that's their csr or plant a few trees take a few pictures that's then it then that's okay <laughs> that's fine i'm not saying that's wrong but that, try to transcend that try to do up uh, try to scale up try to raise the bar of of social social commitment that's what i want to share to the because this is a business forum right? yep. so i just like to share that with the people successful in your own ways i'm not saying you have to be, to be a multi-millionaire to do yeah. this no you can just own a small cafeteria or a small barber shop or or a small pharmacy then you can do these things and you don't have to help a hundred people 200 yeah. people yeah. just help one or two or three and that's it that's that's your social i know that's your that's your social commitment so i hope you are really learning right now and i'm also learning a lot so ed um just to wrap up or summarize all the things you said um, can you give our viewers sort of a step process or like a blueprint on how they can start doing business doing business is an awareness Ooh, it's like forming a habit you it doesn't happen overnight it's a mantra it's you hypnotize yourself, <laughs> hypnotize yourself. Uh, it's a transition no it's also creativity don't fall and uh, my advice don't fall in love too much with a concept ah. why because if you fall in love with a concept you have that propensity to just find any reason a reason lang ha, that it's a good idea it will succeed and even if it doesn't work yeah. no? so and start small do not start big wow and that's that depends also in the capacity of the person sir no i have a classmate i'm very proud of him he's already 60 years old mm -hmm. at 60 he's just starting his food business it's just oh. a small carinderia nice. but he doesn't realize it he, i'm very proud of my classmate his name is alex no? I, i'm proud of him because at 60 he never gave up ah, i'm 60 i'm what i should not be doing these things no you can it, it's a petty it's a very petty business but small business but carinderia everybody sm started as a shoe, shoe, shoe store. Just a, yeah, my father goes there and who, who puts on his shoes? It was Henry C. Wow, oh. amazing! <laughs> Henry C. So up to now, yeah. Yeah, he he is the one selecting the designs of the shoes. Now that's his passion. So that shoe store was just a small space in near Good Earth Emporium, I think. That's what my father told me. Do not start big. Be humble. Though you may think big, there's a. I have a thin line theory. Yep. No. I heard that. So that's a thin line principle. There's a thin line between arrogance yep. and, and confidence. confidence. Thin line between humble and shy. There's a thin line between being ambitious and thinking big. And it's all air, <laughs> no. So be careful. You don't make that mistake. If you know, you just want to be big time. You just want to be this. So that you, know, it's it's uh, it does. It, your starting point is uh, not good. Not you good. Don't get the foundation. And sad to say, that's what millennials see. You know, big because time, big time. So big time, kayo. I want to be in a suit, an office, ana, no? Yep. But they don't realize how these people started. started. And actually, that's just a facade. Yeah. 
Yeah. When you see them in party, in a car, in a, that's just a, that's just a facade. They don't see them work so hard like 12 to 14 hours a day. a day. Yeah, that's true. And deeply focused. Deeply focused. And, and you know, I just like to caution even my kids. <laughs> but my kids are not grounded because I expose them also to, to very impoverished places. In, you know, my advice to other parents, yes. expose your kids not to all, you know, all wealth or you know, this business. Expose them to the grounded people. There are places that I've been to in Pasil yeah. because we always go around. Their dwelling is not, not bigger than this area. Dwelling, huh? There are four people like sardines. Sardines. Ano lang yun? This small. No CR, no toilet, no showers. They have to shower somewhere else. If you see them, you'll be, you know, you, you'll be humbled mm -hmm. and you'll be grateful. Uh, your social commitment will be uh, de de developed. Empowered. Empowered. Oh. No? Uh, going back to that ano, business, just ano, take baby steps. Okay. Don't take strides. Just don't be over ambitious. Because ano, my father always say, money is round. If you run after it, it will roll faster than your you. Just be passionate. Don't be obsessed. Oh. That's another thin line. Passionate, uh, if you're passionate, you are committed to the to whatever you do. It's from the heart. But if you transition that thin line from passion into obsession, then that's slowly where you lose your soul because at all costs you have to sell this bahala na if it's fake or not. Yeah. <laughs> All about the profits, no? But it's about the money, about the profit. So, you know, you keep a balance. So that's what I meant. A thin line between obsession and, and passion. passion. Can you just give or leave us with a big message for all our audience who are watching? I, I, I'd like to share that. Uh, my experience when I was, you know, when I went into serious business. Of course, when I was in college, <laughs> I won't call it serious because I was selling uh, t-shirts in the dorm, uh, t-shirts, uh, sandwiches, stationaries, and so many things. We were in a dorm in Ateneo. So, I, you know, I, I, my best friend who up to now is my best friend, we were partners. <laughs> uh, bochoy, bochoy. So, that was not the serious type of business. But when I transitioned into serious business, that was uh, in... 1979 when I was 20 years old, I graduated 20, so went into business right away. No two years experience, business right away. Yeah, and started selling the product that was replacing the imported ones. Mm -hmm. I realized something because I was selling. Mm -hmm. Selling is so tempting. You are so tempted to say anything Ah, that will just true. make a sale. Very true. To a point that, you know, you just do anything. You know, bring them to, let's say, you know, karaoke or what, or this and that, you know. Yeah. And I felt, if I keep doing this, I'll, I'll probably, I'll, I'll be burning myself on both ends, the candle on both ends. Yeah. I will lose myself, I will lose my values, I will lose my soul. Just to get, I know, just to get the sale. So there was a point in time that I decided, yeah, I will do things from the heart. If you want to buy my product, it's because you believe that, you know, you can count on me and the product is good. Mm -hmm. And because there is the friendship that ties down the business and my being dependable. Yep. So from there, I felt better and felt good. You know, I don't have to entertain them anymore in karaoke and you know whatever happens after karaoke. It, oh. Yeah, it, when it's having dinner with them, it's a pleasant dinner with yeah. a, a friend that I can relate to, not a customer anymore. Uh. So things like that, you, 
Doing things from the heart makes everything in life much more meaningful, more purposeful, more more ano, uh, more fun. And it's the same way as my as our advocacy. It's uh, no, we do it from the heart. It's not for PR. You don't see our you know, our, our dance sport advocacy. You don't see our names, our yeah. our company. Nothing. It's from the heart. We just want to do it for the kids. Not necessarily because we. It's a social commitment. It's a it's a it's a commitment from the heart. Not not for any other purpose. You have to do that para sincerity and humility will always be there. Thank you so much, Sir Ed, and we really learned from him a lot today. I hope you consider his insights as something that's worth to relearn and relearn in your journey towards life, and not just being an investor, but being also a true and meaningful human being. So thank you so much for watching. If you have questions, if you have comments, if, if you want people that you want to guess for this show, uh, please comment it below. If you're watching this in YouTube or, you, or, or in Instagram, please subscribe if you're in NIGTV and click that bell button so that you will be notified. Thank you so much for watching. Again, this is Sir Chubby for the Investment Guide, your honest reviews for investments.